Welcome to SWK's video series on SAGE 100. This video is going to demonstrate inventory requirements planning. The setup of this new module is very simple. I basically have the option to include or not the sales order module in the calculation of purchase orders or the production management module. In my demo data, I am a distribution company, so only the sales order module is available as an option. Once I have that option selected, I can begin operating in the module. It's very simple. I'm going to launch the uh, panel here that allows me to make some selections or some filters based on item code, product line, warehouse code, buyer code, planner codes, and I can also select a cutoff date for my sales order promise dates and my requirement dates from my purchase orders. I'm going to click on Generate. I'll get a little warning because I chose not to enter a cutoff date, and then I'll continue and it is processing the information. I'm going to click on the Purchase button and it's going to display all of the items in inventory that have a record in a warehouse. Now, as you could see, I have many things here that might make this a little hard to work with, so I'm going to put in some filters. The first thing I'm going to do is select a warehouse code, and I'm going to work in warehouse 001. It's made my list a little more manageable. I'm going to make my list even more manageable by selecting a vendor. Now when I look at this, I have a very manageable list and it is all for this particular vendor. I can choose to delete a line if I don't want to include it. I'll just delete, hit my delete icon or I can choose to put it on hold so it will display but if I uh, create my purchase orders, it will not be included in that purchase order. Now, when I look at the item on line 3, we could see it's recommending that I purchase 74. I have the information right in front of me that I have a quantity on hand of 45, quantity on purchase order, quantity on sales order of 52. It's also telling me what my maximum on-hand quantity is set to in my reorder points, and I have selected maximum stock level. If I want to know a little more information about this, I'm going to click on the detail icon. This is going to show me what the balance is going to be of this particular item should I do nothing. You'll see here that on 7.15, 2020, I'm going to run out of um, inventory. Now, I might want to look at this list perhaps without this sales order. Maybe I know this is a special sales order and I intend later to issue a, a separate purchase order just for to supply this. And you could see that it changes my balance. It's no longer considered. I'll put this back on and we're back here where it is recommending us to get up to our 70 purchase quant our seven our purchase quantity is going to be 74 based on the minus 4 plus we want to have 70 on hand. Now, I can override the 74. I can choose to buy 50 or whatever I want. I can come into my unit cost and I know that I'm purchasing it for $80 instead of $81. The unit cost is coming over from the purchase order module. It's using the vendor price level should you have it or it's using the standard cost hierarchy in standard sage. I'm going to put most of the re uh, these other items on hold and then I'm going to generate my purchase orders. I just have three line items here. Let's go create this purchase order. I'm going to create a new order. It's telling me three lines have been generated. That makes sense. And let's go out to the purchase order module and take a look. 
You'll see here are my three items. You'll see the cost override that I had, plus the override on the quantity. Coming back to my purchased items, I'm going to uh, take away the, um, the um, filter for my items, and I want to address these two lines here that do not have a vendor number. These vendor numbers are coming from the default vendor that is set on the item code. I'm going to select uh, the, this first um, uh, vendor for these, and if I choose, I can select another vendor for any one of these line items. It is only making that change for the screen that we're looking at. It is not going back to the item and changing the default vendor. Now I can continue on by creating additional purchase orders. I think you could see that this is quite simple to use, very handy, and I hope you'll try it out. Hope you have enjoyed this video and have found it useful. Thank you for watching.